The year is 25 BC. The Roman Republic is dead, torn apart by a century of civil wars and anarchy. Caesar's adoptive heir, Octavian, emerged as the great winner after a bloody struggle between himself and Mark Anthony, ushering in a period of peace for the weary Romans. The ancient land of Egypt, previously under the Greek Ptolemaic dynasty, was annexed by the Romans after Octavian defeated Mark Anthony and the Egyptian pharaoh Cleopatra at the Battle of Actium, 31 BC. The Roman state was transformed, and although Octavian maintained the veneer of Roman republicanism, historians generally agree that the Roman Republic had come to an end, and the era of the Roman Empire had begun. With Egypt now incorporated into the empire, the Mediterranean Sea was now a Roman lake, and the world was seemingly at peace, but not for long. In the north of Spain, in the mountains of Cantabria, fierce tribes of Celts called the Asturies and the Cantabri had yet to be conquered, and Octavian would spend the year of 26 BC to personally lead his legions against this final holdout of Iberian Celts. As the war dragged on for about 10 years, Rome's neighbors would come to know of this conflict, with some seeing it as a unique opportunity to take advantage of. Just south of Roman Egypt, in the land called Nubia, was the African kingdom of Kush in modern-day Sudan. The ruler of Kush, who the Roman and Greek sources named Candace, had heard that the Roman emperor Augustus was engaged in a war in faraway Hispania and was therefore distracted. The Cushite queen Candace was also aware that two years earlier, the Roman legions based in Egypt had lost many men to sunstroke after a disastrous expedition fighting nomadic tribes in Arabia. Some 650 years before this, the kings of Cush had once ruled Egypt, with their capital city, Napata, becoming the religious capital of the Egyptian world. Fully aware of this once glorious past, Candace saw an opportunity to restore the ancient Kushite dynasty and immediately marched an army along the Nile and into Roman Egypt. The Roman writer Cassius Dio, writing some two centuries later, recorded that this Kushite army advanced to the southernmost Egyptian city named Elephantine, while, quote, ravaging everything they encountered, end quote. News of this incursion reached the prefect of Egypt in Alexandria, named Publius Petronius. At this time, there was three legions stationed in Egypt, the 3rd Saranica, the 12th Fulminata, and the 22nd Deuteriana legions. All of these legions were led by senior tribunes instead of senators, as Augustus made a law stating that senators could not enter Egypt, let alone command legions. This was most likely meant to prevent a senator from attempting a rebellion, as Egypt was a rich land and any potential usurper would have access to ample funds and men to seriously threaten the unity of the young empire. With a force of 10,000 infantry and 8,000 cavalry, Petronius launched his counterattack against some 30,000 Kushite forces in the closing months of 25 BC. This response succeeded in forcing the Kushites to retreat to the city of Selchus, or modern-day Dhaka, in the Sudan. Shortly after this battle, peace negotiations began, with the Romans demanding that all stolen property and prisoners be returned immediately. The Kushites asked for three days to deliberate their decision. When three days passed, with no attempt by the Kushites to meet the Roman demands, Petronius attacked them again, with the Kushites fleeing in disarray. The Greek historian Strabo described the scene, saying, quote, Badly commanded and badly armed, for they carried large shields made of raw hides and hatchets for offensive weapons. Some, however, had pikes and others swords. Part of the insurgents were driven to the city of Selchus. Others fled to uninhabited country, end quote. Candace herself escaped the battlefield with her personal bodyguard. 
inundated with captured Kushite prisoners, with some of them being high-ranking generals in Candace's army. Petronius ordered these men, along with the rest of the prisoners from the battle, to be sent to Augustus in Rome via Alexandria. The capture of Celchus did not provide the Romans with a sufficient buffer zone, nor did it teach the Kushites a severe enough lesson on Roman retribution. With this, Petronius looked to press this advantage and continue marching his army down the Nile, pursuing the remaining Kushite army. Along the way, the Romans stormed one Kushite city after another, eventually stopping at the occupied settlement of Khazar Ibrim and establishing a garrison. The path to the Kushite capital city, Napata, was open, and Petronius was determined to capture it for the glory of Rome. Built on a sacred hill called Jebel Barkal, the city of Napata was 700 years old by then. The Barkal Hill had been considered by the Egyptians to be the home of the god Amon, and around the bottom of the hill stood a number of ancient Egyptian temples. These temples were more than a thousand years old and were most likely built by the pharaoh Tuthmosis III, who ruled the area centuries earlier. Upon reaching the outskirts of Napata, the Romans were hoping to confront Candace, but were surprised to find out that she fled to another town, and were instead met by Kushite ambassadors sent by Candace. They offered to return the prisoners taken from Elephantine, as well as looted royal statues in exchange for peace. But this deal was unacceptable to Petronius, who rejected the deal and instead ordered the walls of the city be stormed and the city sacked. Pillaging and looting ensued, and the city came to be occupied. With the summer approaching and not wanting to linger in the heat, Petronius ordered a withdrawal from the city back to Khazar Ibrahim where he strengthened the garrison with 400 men and food supplies to last two years. This would be considered the southernmost point in the entire Roman Empire. Surprisingly, the sack of Napata would not prove fatal to the Kushites, as Candace would spend the next three years recouping her army to attack the Roman garrison at Khazar Ibrim. The ancient sources are unclear on the details of this attack, but what is known is that the Romans once again entered into negotiations with the Kushites. The Romans agreed to withdraw their frontier back to the old border of Maharaka, located about 80 miles south of Aswan, where it remained for the next 300 years. This would prove to be one of the few Roman armies to penetrate Africa south of Egypt in all of Roman history. <laughs>